But you have to have the courage to do that. You have to have the courage to go into the dark places that I'm promising you. That the things that you most need to find, you're going to find them in the places that you least want to look. And that means you have to go into those dark places. You could wait for the monster to come out of the closet, or you could go into the closet and engage the monster. That monster that's inside of you, that you project into the closet when you're a little kid. You could wait for that monster to come out at some point in your life, or you could go in there and engage the monster on your own terms. Hopefully that's what you're going to do, because that monster, if you wait for it to come out, it's going to attack you when you are most vulnerable, when you're weakest, when you're softest. It's there to go after this thing when you're ready to go. Now, if you're sitting there going like, why would you do that? That's what you're missing. It's because of his willingness to sacrifice. To sacrifice what you are, for what you possibly could become later on. For the masses, it's difficult to do that. For most of us, it's difficult to do that. That means, like, for example, in school, how do you get an education? You have to pay attention. You have to study. You can't just hear what someone says and go, wow, and then go back to doing nothing. You have to, you have to, you have to focus on it. You have to develop yourself. And the more distractions that you surround yourself with, the harder it is to, to, to study. But understand what goes into that. That means that you're going to have to give up the thing that's distracting you and entertaining you right now for the hope that possibly, maybe, someday, this thing that you're doing right now is going to be useful for you. What we miss is that it is useful for you right now. In other words, if you can put away your distractions, focus on the work that you should be doing right now, it isn't just like, man, when am I ever going to have to know about this stuff? It's not that you have to know about this stuff, it's that you have to be able to do the thing, of, you know, practice of putting away the instant gratification for what you could get out of it tomorrow, maybe. And that's the hard thing, because you have to imagine, first off, we have to imagine that tomorrow even exists. And sometimes we have to imagine that if we do this thing, it may even turn out better. And that's a really hard thing for us to do. That's why I say this, the idea of sacrifice is a really deep concept. It's not just, it's nothing primitive, it's, it's really sophisticated. So, <clears throat> so what are you? Because you said earlier that we have to focus on being ourselves. I was doing this exercise with my last period. So what are you? Because again, you must be yourself. I'm going to get a poster that says, be yourself. I'm going to put on the wall. So what are you? And one thing I know that some of you guys are. I'll help. You can help me with this list. Um, you're anxious. <laughs> some of you guys are really anxious and, and you're nervous. Oh, what else do I hear? Oh, you're, I, I keep hearing you guys are so depressed. <laughs> So, what else are you? Yeah, I'm Asian. He's Asian. <laughs> but we can't fix that. <laughs> but it's saying, can't go, was that? It? <laughs> Did he just, uh huh? That's not, a, like, that's not an emotional thing, though. I'm Calvin. You're what? I'm Calvin. Calvin. What is Calvin? Besides anxious and depressed. <laughs> Why are you so happy? Don't you realize how depressed and anxious you are? That's why you're so happy. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss. It's all right, man. Just be yourself. Just be yourself. Yeah, you have one outlier over here. It's okay because in, in all of this mess, I am happy. Maybe. Maybe. And of course, this list could go on quite a long time. We looked at, all, at the negative things, but. This is part of the problem, is that we, we kind of lull ourselves into this idea of, well, just, just be who you are. Yeah, but what if the thing I am is anxious, depressed, lying, awkward, selfish, cowardly, lying, hypocritical me? Just be happy. <laughs> You'll be okay. Oh, okay, that's all I have to do, is, is just be happy. Because part, the, part of that process of, 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 of self-sacrifice is to recognize what your present condition is. In other words, if everything is great and spectacular and wonderful right now, maybe there's no reason for us to sacrifice. Maybe things are going on as they should. But if there's something wrong with who I am today, or with what the condition is today, well then, of course, I'm going to sacrifice, because I need to improve my today, tomorrow. And that might mean that maybe the problems in your life are these things up here. Maybe the problem in your life is that you're, you're anxious, and you're depressed, and you're tired, and you're awkward, you're selfish, you're cowardly, you're lying, and you're hypocritical. And how many of those things could be fixed? All of them. There's nothing there that, up here that you couldn't fix. Heck, we could even fix this. Happy if we wanted to. 
give you a couple of minutes, but yeah, it could be any of these things. Like for example, one of the reasons that they might be anxious, like why might somebody be anxious? What would we have anxiety about? Yeah. Afraid of judgment. What's that? Afraid of judgment. Yeah, we're afraid of judgment. Yeah, maybe we're afraid of judgment. Now, what kinds of things would people judge us about? Appearance. Your appearance. Okay. Like what? Your nose. My nose. What about my nose? <laughs> Just say it. <laughs> What's wrong with my nose? It's beautiful. <laughs> I sound like a modern Disney character. My problem is I'm just too great. <laughs> What's wrong with my nose? Nothing. Really don't see, a, you don't see how, how pointy that thing is? <laughs> it looks like a parrot's beak, man. Come on. I have, a, I have a pointy nose. Oh, okay. Now, can I do anything about my nose? Yeah. Surgery. I need a surgery. I mean, that's pretty extreme. Outside of surgery, is there anything I can do about my nose? Injection. Injection? What kind of injection did I get? I, I've seen you like right injecting and then like you can shake your knee. I just massage it home. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can do like Play Doh, just. <laughs> I wonder if I could do that with my personality. <laughs> Make it more lovable. Yeah, probably outside of, I guess, injections and surgery. I don't, I don't trust those injections. I don't, I, I don't think about them, but that just sounds kind of weird to me. Just, all of a sudden your cartilage just becomes glue and you just, <laughs> like a mouthpiece, just form it. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know, then. So then if that's the case, then there's probably nothing I can do about my nose. Well, then why do I need, what do I need to do then? Well, shit. I guess I better get smart. Or I better get ambitious. Or I better get strong. Or I better get kind. Or I better get, or I better get, or I better get. In other words, there's something that I can do to alleviate the anxiety of that. Because now, it's like, well, you've got a, a, a pointy nose going, yeah, but also there's other things going on too. And that helps to alleviate some of this. It helps to relieve some of the suffering of life. Because you're becoming better in some way. You know, depression, there's something I can do about that. Of course. What should you do when you have depression? Should you ignore it? No. No. Treat, treat, treat depression like a, like a, like a neighbor who shows up. Invite them in. Ask them to have a seat. Talk to them. Find out what they want. When you have depression, you've got to talk to them. Find out what it wants. What's, what's bringing it about. What's causing it. But you have to have the courage to do that. You have to have the courage to go into the dark places. But I'm promising you that the things that you most need to find, you're going to find them in the places that you least want to look. And that means you have to go into the dark places. You know, you can, you can, at night, <clears throat> we talked to you remember the monster in the closet, you could wait for the monster to come out of the closet, or you could go into the closet and engage the monster. That monster that's inside of you, that you project into the closet when you're a little kid, you could wait for that monster to come out at some point in your life, or you could go in there and engage the monster on your own terms. Hopefully that's what you're going to do, because that monster, if you wait for it to come out, it's going to attack you when you are most vulnerable, when you're weakest, when you're softest. It's better to go after this thing when you're ready to go. Tired, you know, easy. Improve our diet and get more sleep. Awkward? Yeah. Deal with these first two, you'll be less awkward because you're going to find yourself as a strong personality. A person who's accomplished some things, who's got self-confidence. And how is it that you get self-confidence? You pick up a few wins. That's all it is. Pick up a few wins. Just do a few things. Set a few goals for yourself. Small goals. Don't have to be this major goal. Don't sit there and say, my goal next week is to run a marathon. It's not going to happen. You're going to fail. And then when you fail, you're going to, it's going to to convince you in your mind that you therefore never should have even tried in the first place. See, I can't even do it. And then you're going to beat yourself up. Um, go run a quarter of a mile. Quarter mile. Eighth of a mile. Start with an eighth of a mile. And get through that. Once you get through an eighth of a mile, you're going to look back and go, huh, I'd never, I never would have seen myself doing that. And then you push yourself to a quarter mile. And then what, when, once you get to a quarter mile, I bet you, you're probably going to say, I'm going to go for the mile. Because we tend to jump like that. And then you, you'll do it, you may end up having to walk some of it, but you'll get to the end and just be like, that's so weird, like two weeks ago, I never would have imagined myself running a mile. And all of a sudden I'm doing it. I wonder what else I'm, I'm capable of if I put my mind to. And that doesn't mean you stop running, it means you continue to push yourself in those things. You know? If you have a backpack and your backpack's a mess, clean your backpack. And I don't just mean that in the sense like, oh my God, it's terrible to look at. No, no. If you can't organize your backpack, what makes you think that you're ready to organize a family? or to organize your community, or to organize, God, a country or, or a world. 
And when I see people out in the streets protesting about stuff, they have these big placards and they're chanting and everything. I wish I had keys to all their houses. I want to run to their house and see what their room looks like. Because I want to know if, if, they're out in the, if they're out in the streets telling the whole world how they should, how they should live, and yet the way that they live is a complete mess. You know, would you trust an accountant who's bankrupt? Hopefully not. I don't know why we would listen to political activists whose houses are messes. Or we would listen to people whose backpacks are messes. And that doesn't mean, therefore, to shut up. What it means is, fix yourself. Fix yourself. Fix the little things that, the little things that you have control over are the things that you should exercise radical control over. Because there are a lot of things in your life that you do not have control over. Do I have control over whether or not you think my nose, my nose is too pointy? I don't have control over that. Um, <clears throat> if I get a nose job, now what? Dude, did you guys see a scaling gun a nose job? What the hell? Now you're going to judge me for getting a nose job. Well, it wasn't a nose job. He just injected some stuff into his nose and then formed like Play-Doh. <laughs> oh my God, he did that? What an idiot. It's like, yeah, you can't control whether or not people are going to judge you. But what you can control is how you respond to it. Because sometimes judgment, sometimes judgment is, is very helpful. I remember when I was, um, I was teaching at uh, Pasadena City College. That was my first, my first job was as a professor at Pasadena City College. Uh, 23. I was, it was great because I had students who were older than me which was always fun, because they, they're not very receptive. Anyway, I had the student in the class, his name was Brandon. Let me tell you his name. His name is Brandon Locatel. Brandon, if you ever see this video, this is for you. Because I still talk to him today. He was this big, heavy dude, and he had a scar across his head. And he, wore, he, he had five of the same shirts, and five of the same pants, and he wore the same outfit every day. And this guy was a very religious dude. He liked to sit in class, it was a philosophy class. And he was very big on talking about God and Jesus and telling people about how they were going to hell for the terrible ways in which they were living. Um, very vocal about all this stuff. And um, I remember one day he was going on a particular rant about something, and I asked him, how do you feel about gluttony? And everyone like stops and just goes, Durr. I turned to him and he goes, what? I said, look at you, dude. You're looking like 250 pounds of chewed bubble gum. How do you feel about gluttony? Because you're big on judging other people. Have you ever, you know, why don't you fix yourself? And he said that, like, he, he told me later on that when I said that to him, he just about died inside. And I was like, okay, good. Good. Because sometimes you have to die. Getting, dying is okay if, if you can, yeah, dying once in a while is good if you can be reborn once in a while as well. Can anybody guess what Brandon does for a living today? Super wrestling? Nope. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, they're, they're clowning on you, dude. 20 years later, we're still clowning on you, Brandon. <laughs> a priest? Nope. What's that? Nutritionist? Very close. He's a personal trainer. He has a business in La Habra, up here in Los Angeles. He's a, he's a personal trainer. And he said, in fact, this guy lost so much weight, I think he had to get surgery to, 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 to take care of all the, yeah, the excess skin and like that. He had a, <laughs> what an asshole. He, he had a fundraiser at Shakey's Pizza. <laughs> to raise money for his surgery. I'm like, man. <laughs> I mean, I went, but still. <laughs> but he's a really good dude, man. He's married. I think he has a kid now. I think but he's new married. I, I know for sure he's married. Um, he's up in La Havre. His name is Brandon Locatel. Um, but this was a guy who was able to take some personal inventory. And what died? Well, the old man died. He had to reckon the old man dead, and he had to give birth to the new person. And that new person had some, had some anxiety, sure, but got rid of the depression. This guy's never tired. He's not a guy. He's a very outgoing guy. His whole wish, mission life is to help others through exercise. And he's not a coward. He's faced down some serious demons, man. Yeah, so, um, this is the goal of life. To sacrifice what we presently are for what we maybe could become. But the first thing is first. We have to recognize the things that we are. And so when someone comes along and says, just be yourself, that's terrible advice. <laughs> it's terrible advice. This is why you'll never hear me say this. If I ever say anything to you that sounds like be yourself, but it actually probably was, was be what you could. Be what you could become. And that's a very lofty goal. It's like the beginning of Pinocchio. And remember how that, how that uh, movie starts? What is, yeah, what is Geppetto wish upon? Geppetto, man. Pinocchio. Come on, man. You, uh, man. A star. He wishes upon a star. Why a star? Because that star is way, way out there. Are you ever going to reach that star? No. Not with that attitude. But probably not. <laughs> I mean, 99.9% .9 probably not. But is there anything else in your life 
that is worth striving for than that star. Like when you realize, I mean, I mean when, you, when you actually like fucking realize how, how precious your, your life is, it's incredible to me how, how low we set our sights a lot of times, man. You know, like, like your life is so incredibly precious and valuable. Look at the whole universe. The whole fucking, there's one of you. That's it. How many planets are there? Trillions. And yet we look at, at planets with such amazement, like, whoa, look at that. There's, a, there's another planet out there. And it's not. It's like a little dot. And then that, and there are always artist renditions of what the planet looks like, but we're fascinated by that. Whoa. And think about that. That's only one of a trillion. And we're like, whoa. Look at the person sitting next to you. You know, that's one of eight billion in the, in the entire universe. Each of you is so incredible. And, and yet we, set our, we, we take this very precious life that we have, and we set our goals so incredibly low. We set, we set goals for ourselves that are not worthy of the life that, that, that you have. You know? If you value your life and value your time, and if you value your life, I mean, really put your sights on something that's, that's, that's worth your life. It's worthy of your life. That's why we wish upon this star. Because, yeah, it's way out there, man, but what worth having isn't way out there. For some of us right now, man, having to deal through depression, that's way out there. You mean get up every morning and function? Yeah. Come on. Why don't you tell me something reasonable like go push that mountain over? You know, for some people having to deal with this anxiety or being tired or awkward or whatever other things are here, those are some, some seemingly insurmountable things, but I'm promising you they're not insurmountable. The only things that are really insurmountable are the things in your mind that you've set yourself on, not even, not even trying to push over. So I guess what I'm saying is to reckon the old person dead. Get rid of the old person. They need to die. Metaphorically. <laughs> It'd be very sad if I get here Monday and like, where did, where did everyone go? <laughs> huh. well, I guess. But reckon the old person dead. You know? And then the dead can't live. Yeah. Well, I also think that like you also have to go through like experiences. Like so you can like appreciate. Like for example, like when I went to Mexico, um, for vacation, my cousins um would go to would wake up like at four in the morning to then like take a trip on the bus two hours away just to go to school every day. And like, and then right here, like, I'm over here, like, complaining because I have to wake up a little bit earlier because Mr. was to school, like, at 7.30. And then, and like, I feel like you also have to be, like, humble, like, really good. So then, like, you, you come back and you're more determined. And like, that, that, like, um, like, that pushes you forward, like, oh, they do it, like, every day. Then why can't I work right here? Yeah. yeah. What's the thing that's stopping you from accomplishing? I see these guys who, who do burpees and they have no legs. They have mechanical legs and they find a way to do it. I had a student over at Southwestern College who's mentally handicapped severely. And the guy graduated from SDSU. He works for Telemundo today. The guy can't put the ice to, yeah, I'll leave it at that. And thinking of all these people in our lives, and that, that becomes, this, and by the way, that becomes a hard thing also, because we can look at that and say, wow, if they can do it, so you know, how come I can't? That's the proper way to look at it. This is the thing that's such a killer, because that makes you look at, like, even they can do it, and I can't do it. That's what makes this thing so hard. That's why we have to reorient our thinking sometimes. Because it isn't that you can't. It's that you can't. Why? you got people in Mexico waking up at 4.30 in the morning to go to school. I have students in my classroom right now who are waking up at 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning to cross over to come here. You know? So it doesn't even have to be so far away. Some of, you, some of these folks you guys know. And then the question becomes, what do you do when you get there? But you're absolutely right about the thing about being humble. And that's one of the, the reasons it's important to see what we are and to recognize it, to invite it in, ask it what, what it wants. What do you want? Fill in the blank. The things that you want in life. What are those goals? 
And then you're going to ask yourself, what do I have to fix in order to get there? It's probably going to be a lot. And then as you fix them, check, 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 check. And then you can look back on it at some point and say, look at me today. I'm a strong, self-confident, accomplished, ethical person who keeps his word, a role model. And then you can look back and say, man, look what I used to be. You know, I was anxious, depressed, tired, awkward, selfish, cowardly, lying, hypocrite. And then you come across people in the world who are all of these things. And you can't help but have some compassion there. Hopefully. That's the humble part. Don't forget what you used to be. Just remember it's what you used to be, though. It's not what you are. It's what you used to be. Don't lose sight of that. Because if you lose sight of that, you lose sight of your ability to love people. And you don't want that to be the case, because... Without love and without music, life would be a mistake. These are the things that make it all worthwhile, man. And so don't lose sight of the things that make it worthwhile. Don't lose sight of your ability to make the world a better place because the only sensible thing to do once you crawl yourself out of this hole is to dust yourself off, look back down the hole and see what you, where, where, how far you've come, and then you're going to recognize that there are other people who are also dangling from there who need, to be pulled, who need help out of that hole. And you can help them out of the hole as well. This personality. So, hmm. questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques. Happy Thursday.